All right, so here I have a few more examples about limits involving infinity. I felt the last video was getting really long, so th these few examples, um, I'd like to briefly go over them with you to give you some more examples, especially about limits as x goes to negative infinity. So for example, what happens as x goes to negative infinity of a uh, situation where the degree of the top equals to the degree of the bottom, like 5x over 3x minus 1? Now, if it was x going to positive infinity, you would say the answer is 5 thirds, right? Ratio of the leading coefficients. Well, first let me state the answer. The answer will be the same, 5 thirds, even when the uh, x goes towards negative infinity. And then I'll explain why. So 5 thirds, same answer. One way to look at it is you just look at the dominant terms, 5x over 3x. And then the x's cancel, 5 thirds. It doesn't matter if x is going to positive or negative infinity, same answer. The other approach is divide everything by x. So the bottom will be 3 minus 1 over x. The top will be 5. Right, so basically I multiply the top by 1 over x and the bottom by 1 over x of the original question. And now take a limit as x goes to infinity. This one will go to 0. So even if it's x goes to negative infinity, that ratio still goes to 0. Think of it like 1 over negative a million, 1 over negative uh, 10 million, and so forth. So 5 over 3 minus 0 will still be 5 third. So therefore, you don't really have to do this analysis every time. Just know if x is positive or negative infinity, it leads to the same answer when degree of the top equals to the degree of the bottom. Now what about the situation? The degree of the bottom is higher. If x had been going to positive infinity, you know the answer, right? Um, the top is growing at a lesser rate than the bottom. The ratio is zero. What if, it, if x is going to negative infinity? Well, the answer will still be the same. And just to show you, multiply top and bottom by 1 over x squared. So x squared times 1 over x squared is 1 plus 5 over x squared. And in the numerator, 6x times 1 over x squared, that will be 6 over x. As x goes to infinity, this one will go to 0, this one will go to 0. So the only thing you're going to be left with is 0 over 1, and that's 0. So that, sorry, what about negative infinity? Same thing, right? So I'm so used to working with infinity, but 6 over negative infinity, still that ratio will go towards 0. Uh, it'll be maybe like negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.000001, but nonetheless, it's going towards zero. And same with this quantity, it's still approaching to zero, even if x goes towards negative infinity. All right, what about something like this? So this time, the growth of top is higher than the bottom. This is when I stated that the answer might be plus or minus infinity previously, and it will be the, still the same situation if x is going to negative infinity. Um, so just like if it went to positive infinity, my suggestion was analyze the leading term, the dominant terms from the top and the bottom. So that's x cubed over x squared, which is x. So that what we're saying is this is going to behave the same way as the limit of x as x goes to negative infinity. And of course, if you substitute negative infinity in here, the whole thing goes to negative infinity. Now, what if you had x cubed on the top and something like, uh, let's make it x to the fourth on the top and x to the second on the bottom, something like this. Same exact question, but x to the four instead of x cubed. How would it change? limit as x goes to negative infinity. Well, if you look at the leading terms, you're going to have x squared. Uh, therefore, you're going to have limit as x goes to negative infinity of x squared. Any thoughts where that would lead us to? So think of negative 10, negative a million, negative 10 billion. Every one of those is being quantity squared. So they'll turn into positive quantities that are getting increasingly larger. In that situation, the answer would be positive infinity. So very important to analyze this case on a case-by-case -case basis. Like when the degree of the top is higher than the bottom, just analyze it on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you want to go with the longer approach, which is 
you know, multiply top and bottom with the highest degree term in the denominator. You could certainly do that, and that will that will give you the same answer. So for this problem, you will multiply the entire denominator by one over x squared, and entire numerator by one over x squared. And if you do that, um, the second and the third terms they're going to approach to zero. And the only thing you're going to be left with really is on the top, you're going to be left with is x, and on the bottom, 1, and everything else going towards 0. So you're going to end up with the same exact answer, basically. Okay, what about this one? This is a little bit unusual because our shortcut rules do not apply when we have radicals. But we can still try to use the idea a little bit of dominant terms. So look at the dominant term in the numerator. That is the square root of 4x squared. If you simplify that, that will be absolute value of 2x. And usually we just write 2x and don't even give it a second thought because we assume x is positive. Um, and the bottom is, uh, the dominant term on the bottom denominator is 3x. So the limit should be equal. And if x is approaching towards positive infinity, that means x is positive. So absolute value of 2x will be just 2x. And in that situation, your answer will be positive 2 thirds. But what if you were taking the limit of the same question, but this time as x goes towards negative infinity? Right, so if you analyze the same way, so look at the dominant term on the top, it will be absolute value of 2x. On the bottom, 3x. But this time, x is going towards negative infinity. So the 2x in absolute value will turn into negative 2x as x goes to negative infinity. The bottom is 3x. And now take a limit as x goes to negative infinity. And so the x's cancel, you have negative 2 thirds, and the limit of a constant will be itself, so it will be negative 2 thirds. Another way I can explain this to you is you could take the numerator and factor out an x squared. And not extract the square root of x squared, which is the absolute value of x. And the 5 over x squared in the limiting case is x goes to plus or minus infinity, that will go to 0. So this one will end up being square root of 4, which is 2. And again, the absolute value of the x is either plus x or minus x, depending on whether or not you're going towards positive infinity or negative infinity. In this case, it's going to be negative. So we end up with the same result, negative 2x for the top leading term, 3x for the bottom leading term, and the ratio goes to negative 2 thirds. And finally, to put everything into a little bit uh, uh, context and to give you a picture for what's happening to understand it a little bit better, I'm going to give you a visual here. And look at this graph. This is a graph of this radical function. Um, so basically, notice that the denominator would be 0 if x is equal to 1 third, right? Set the whole thing equal to 0. So you're going to see a vertical asymptote at 1 third. And the horizontal asymptote for this function, there are two of them. There is, as x goes towards negative infinity, you have negative 2 thirds. So this point right here is uh, basically y equals negative 2 thirds. So this is your horizontal asymptote. And as x goes towards negative infinity, that's where the function is approaching. And as x goes to positive infinity, it's approaching to this horizontal asymptote, which is at positive 2 thirds. So as x goes to positive infinity, it's going to 2 thirds. Negative infinity is going to negative 2 thirds. And that pretty much sums up the whole story. So whenever in doubt for more complicated questions like this, you know, feel free to use some heuristic arguments, but also you can try to verify it either using a graphical approach or even maybe a numerical approach. As x is going towards infinity, you can simulate that by letting values of x such as negative 10, negative 100, negative 10,000, and so forth. 
as you can do a table, put your function into y1 in the calculator, and look at what is happening to the y values. And similarly, if x is going to positive infinity, make all of these coefficients positive and look at what's happening to y values. So when the problems are more complicated, you may have to use a combination of different techniques that we have discussed to try to resolve it. And it's always good to be able to check it with one other method. But to make a long story short, the answer to the last question here is negative 2 thirds. And the one previous to that, x goes to infinity, that one was positive 2 thirds. So there you have pretty much, I don't, this is pretty much as complex as it gets, I think, limit as x goes to infinity in our textbook. Um, most other ones you'll be able to do by simple shortcut rules that we have summarized. And I hope you watched the video before this, because otherwise this one by itself is not going to make that much sense. I'm using a lot of the things I have developed in the previous uh, video, so make sure you watch that uh, before you watch this one. See you next time.